Hello everybody, this is Graham Anderson and today I'm going to be looking at a small card game called Canopy. Now I'm always on the lookout for two player games with a very approachable theme. Now my wife will play any game, but she, unlike me, is theme over mechanisms. So when I saw Canopy and all the animals on the inside, I figured she, with her biology degree, would really like the theme. Then I looked at the mechanisms, and I figured, well, those look really good to me. So in Canopy, you're competing to build a most bountiful rainforest with a symbiosis of the different plants and animals coming to play through the cards. Now there are going to be three different piles of cards, and on your turn, you're going to pick up the first and decide if you want to take it or not. Taking it or keeping it means you have to play all the cards from that pile, and of course, not all the cards are beneficial to you. If you skip it, you add a card and move on to the next pile and do the same thing, knowing that you can't go back to a previously skipped pile. You'll be scoring points over three seasons through the seasonal plants and trees, and at the end of the game, you'll also be scoring for all the wildlife that you have collected. So, this game has a lot of positives for me. So, will this be a game that's going to blossom like a beautiful rainforest flower? Or be like my typical houseplants and wither away and die? Let's get it to the table, see how it's played, and we'll come back with my final thoughts on Canopy. So here's Canopy set up. Each player takes a starting trunk. Place the new growth tiles out, shuffle the seed deck, and place it in its spot. Then shuffle all the rainforest cards and randomly place 10 cards back in the box. Split the remaining rainforest cards into three equal decks and place one in the current season. Then the other two besides season two and season three. Place all the victory points off to one side along with the largest tree bonus, largest forest score markers, and the scored tree markers. Place one card down under the new growth one, two cards under new growth two, and of course three under three. Now you're going to be ready to start. The goal of the game is to get the most victory points, and the game is played over three seasons. Each season lasts until all the cards of that season have been played. At the end of each season you will score and discard your plant cards, and the player with the tallest unscored tree will get a bonus. And at the end of the game, your animals will score, and the person with the most trees will get the largest forest bonus. On your turn, you will look at new growth pile 1. If you decide to take it, you'll play all the cards from that pile, then place a new card in its place. If you decide not to take that pile, return it and place an additional card from the deck face down and go on to the next pile and do the same thing. You cannot go back to your previous pile on a turn, and if you reject all the piles, you must randomly draw the top card from the draw deck and play that. Once you've played all the cards that you've got this round, play goes to the next player. This continues until all the cards from the current season are gone. Since this game revolves around the cards, let's have a quick look at them. Trunk cards can be used to either extend a current tree or start a new tree. Trees will not score at the end of the season unless they are also covered by a canopy. And a tree with a canopy is considered complete and you cannot add any more trunks to it. Wildlife cards with text are cards that can be used usually once per season. Wildlife cards with pairs will score points at the end of the game, depending if you have a single animal or if you have the matching mating pair. Wildlife cards remain in your rainforest until the end of the game. Plant cards will show you how they score, usually depending on how many you have of them at the end of the season. When drought cards are added to your rainforest, you must immediately discard one other card, and it can be any card except for any part of a previously scored tree. Any cards with a lightning bolt, such as the drought cards, trigger as soon as they're played. Threat cards are only evaluated at the end of the season. Usually having one threat card is okay, but two of the same threat cards negatively affects you, and three or more will affect both of the players. Seed cards are only used at the end of the season and are used to get extra cards for your rainforest and the sun and rain cards will only score if they're paired together. When all the cards from the current season have been played, we go into the end of season scoring. First, activate any wildlife with an end of season ability. Then, if you have any seed cards, draw three cards from the seed deck, plus an additional one for each fire threat that you currently have. Out of all of those, you're allowed to keep one card for each seed card that you've collected during the season. Play the new cards, return the other cards to the bottom of the deck, and discard any of the seed cards you've collected during the season. Next, you're going to evaluate your threats. A single threat card does nothing. If you have two fire cards, you must discard two plants of your choice. If you have three or more fire cards, then both players discard one plant of their choice. Disease works the same way, but causes you to lose wildlife instead of plants. Then, for any unscored trees of the canopy, you score them now. Score points printed on the trunks, then on the canopy. Once it is scored, you place an animal of your choice on that tree, and it cannot be scored again. Then, the player at the tallest tree will win the bonus for that round. Incomplete trees award no points and cannot be used to win the tallest tree award. 
Then you evaluate your plant and weather cards. After season scoring, discard all of your cards except for trees and wildlife. Wildlife is only scored at the end of the game. Prepare for the next season by taking the next season deck and dealing out one, two, and three cards to the new growth piles, and then the player with the fewest points starts the next season. At the end of the third season scoring, proceed to end of game scoring. Any act of wildlife with scoring, then mating pairs. If you only have one of the animals with a mating pair of scoring on it, then you score the lower points. If you have both, score the higher point value. Finally, the player with the most completed trees will score 10 points as the largest forest bonus. Then, the player with the most points is the winner. Now let's get back to see what I thought about Canopy. So, theme components. I enjoyed the theme in this one, but I wouldn't say it's kind of dripping with theme. You are playing cards to build up your forest, and the trunk and canopy cards kind of make perfect sense. But the scoring of the plants and animals, less so, except for mating the mating pairs. That, that makes sense. So overall, I really enjoyed the theme of this one, and it's well implemented, but I wouldn't say it's a super thematic game. The components for this one are simple cards and a few cardboard chits, but they are really high quality. The art on these cards is absolutely gorgeous. And I love the little completed tree chits. They could have been anything, but again, beautiful wildlife with each one being different. The rule books are very nicely laid out. There's a basic rule book on how to play and a separate one for the card glossary and the variants, which I'll talk about in a bit. I also like that although not strictly a game thing, they are trying to make this game as ecological as possible, with as little plastic as possible. In other words, there's no plastic on the outside of the box, just little stickers holding the box closed. And they're going to be planting one tree for every game sold. You know what, for this style of game and this theme, I appreciated that. So on to the gameplay. The game all comes down to that main mechanism. If you like that, you're going to like the game. And I can say, I liked it. The game is nice, simple, and quick. You're done in 20 to 30 minutes, but it still gives you plenty of decisions to be made. Looking at those piles and trying to figure out how useful it will be to you is just plain fun to me. I like the different ways that the plants score. You know, having lots of them is not always good for all plants. Some of them score best at just a few, and having too many would actually be a negative point. And because of those plant scorings, the threats actually could be beneficial to you. If you have too many of one type of plant that gives you a negative for having too many, Maybe taking a drought, or maybe two fire cards may be useful to get some of them before you actually do the scoring. I really, really enjoyed those decisions. There was kind of maybe no bad cards. All the special abilities of the wildlife give you are not overpowered, but can be definitely useful in certain situations. So it never felt like you were having, like it was a huge disadvantage if you didn't have them. So you weren't just kind of going through the deck to find wildlife cards and ignoring the rest of the cards. Even the trunk and canopy cards. Because you have to play all the cards you take, extending a trunk, or maybe creating a new tree, is sometimes a little tricky. And if you're forced to take a low scoring canopy, you know what, maybe you can use a drought card to get rid of it before it scores. Who knows? Again, just the, the symbiosis of all the cards was really good. Now one thing I also wanted to mention was the variants. It comes with some advanced cards of all types, wildlife, plants, and threats, that you can mix and match into the deck. And definitely has, has suggestions in the rule book of how you can add cards to try and keep the game as balanced as possible. It also has a Shifting Seasons variant, which is another set of cards where you reveal one per season, and it might be a, like a special scoring, or it might change a rule for that current season. Again, nothing drastic, but it does change up the seasons from round to round. There's also a 3 and 4 player and a solo variant in the rulebook as well. So, would I recommend this game? Most definitely. It definitely charmed me with its beautiful artwork and simple and enjoyable gameplay. I love the art in the cards, and the quality of them is top-notch. The cardboard components are also really nice to look at as well. You don't need scoring markers that look like a tree, or score tree markers that look like the different wildlife. But it certainly makes the game look that much better for it. I really enjoy the main mechanism of looking at a pile and making a decision on whether to take it or not. I also like that the threat cards are not always bad. So it's not like a, a take that mechanism in other games where you're kind of sticking your opponent with them. They can actually be very beneficial to your gameplay. There weren't a lot of negatives for me for, for the game. Yes, the game is light, and I do wish there was maybe a little more variation in the plants. I would have loved to see maybe more symbiosis between the plants and the wildlifes. That's strictly a me thing, and it may have pushed the game a little out of its target zone. There is some in there, I just wish there was more. So, I'm going to give this game an 8.5 out of 10 and the Dice Tower Seal of Excellence. This game completely won me over with its charm, from its gorgeous looks to having a really fun and engaging simple main mechanism. If you're looking for a quick two-player game that is easily approachable, I don't think you can go wrong with Canopy. And that's it for the moment. Until next time, thanks for watching.